Well, welcome back to week two, or if you're here for the first time, if you're a guest or visitor and you missed week one, so glad you're here. As we unpack four different songs leading up to our Christmas Eve celebration, four classic songs to spend time focusing on the message that they deliver and the truths from God's word that they help us celebrate during this Christmas season. I don't know how many of you, when you were growing up, or maybe even do now as you are older as an adult, have ever gone Christmas caroling. Like any Christmas carolers here, you, you've gone out with a choir or with other people, and, and you, you've gone to someone's door that you know, maybe a nursing home of someone you love, and, and sang familiar songs to, to be a blessing to them. When I was growing up as a kid, my mom and dad, who were in a choir, would go Christmas caroling every year, visit members of the church or maybe shut-ins or in nursing homes uh, to just bless them in their Christmas season. That music can do that. And the closer song for each and every person, every place that we visited was, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Like it was the final greeting, the final words. Almost everyone knows it. It's on almost every Christmas playlist. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings to you, to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we stop there. You know why? I never really knew it, but as I unpacked it, that song actually has a lot of verses to it. You know why we stopped at verse 2 and didn't go on to verse 3 and 4? Because those aren't so memorable and meaningful. Like there's a lot of things on your Christmas playlist that have memorable lines and a memorable refrain and, and a lot of songs that have a good verse but not every verse is good. You, you know what verse 3 of that familiar song is? So bring us some figgy pudding. And verse 4 We won't go until we get some. Like if those are your friends singing that song at your door, they lack taste and they have a whole lot of rudeness. Like you might want new friends. Like I have no idea what figgy pudding is, but it doesn't sound good. And I'll give you something, but it won't be that. Like not every Christmas song on your playlist has from beginning to end words that are meaningful and memorable and really valuable to hold on to. Some of the most famous Christmas songs of all time, you know, Mariah Carey, All I Want for Christmas is You, is loaded with a whole lot of fluff but one memorable line. But not today's song. Like even some Christmas songs that we sing, even ones that are in the hymnal, not every verse from beginning to end has depth and meaning and insight worth holding on to. Like Pastor Week, past, Pastor, last week, Pastor Bill and Pastor Mike got song one, Away in the Manger, probably the first song outside of Jesus Loves Me that most Christians memorized and learned. And I was a little bit jealous until I looked at it and looked at today's song and said, that song has a whole lot of fluff. Like the cattle are lowing, no crying the baby makes. Like, come on, mom and dad. If a baby doesn't cry after they're born, doctors are, are worried and running around. Like babies cry. And I don't know what lowing cattle do or don't do, but it it sounds a little fluffy to me. But it's a beautiful song from beginning to end that focuses on the moment. Like it takes you to see the scene of what's central to Christmas, the birth of Jesus. But I don't necessarily think it covers the monumental. Like the monumental of all that is happening, all that is going on, all that that means for you and me from beginning to end. And that's what today's song does. Like when you add it to your playlist and that meaningful cradle song that Away in the Manger is that that touches your heart and and sometimes fluffy is good because it's easy to hold on to because they're simple truths. Today we can add some depth, some some 200 proof truth regarding Christmas as we add our song to the playlist. In order for us to understand it, to see the three verses beginning to end and all the depth that it brings, I first want to take you to the scene. The scene where where this song was first sung and and what inspires it. Luke chapter 2 takes us to scene 2 of that first Christmas. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. See, here's the thing about Luke chapter 2. While we read through verses 1 through 7, We know the story, we understand the significance, but that moment and how monumental it was would have been lost on everyone else if not for what takes place next. 
Like those shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock at night, weren't leaving their flocks behind to go to Bethlehem to, to shake hands and give Mary and Joseph hugs and kisses. Like those shepherds weren't running back to Bethlehem for the birth of Jesus because it wasn't their baby. They probably could have cared less. I mean, babies are born all the time. I mean, as monumental as it is for a, a wife and her husband to, to have a baby, it's not so meaningful to just about everybody else. <laughs> except maybe a few close friends in your family. But God knew this was different. And God didn't want to leave the world in the dark, and so God stepped in and made sure others knew about the monumental occurrences of the moment of what had just transpired in Bethlehem. Look at the next few verses, which are probably familiar to most of you. But the angel said to them, as they were terrified, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news. I'm going to stop and pause there for a second. There are a whole lot of good things about Christmas, like food and family, Christmas cards and, and the messages that we send, the lights, the decorations. You know, there are a lot of good things about Christmas. There are a lot of good things that happen and will happen this Christmas that will be memorable to you. But I need you to hear this. It will not be so monumental as what transpired that first Christmas night. The good things of, of our Christmases pale in comparison to the good news of that Christmas. We might call it great news. Here's the news. Today, just a few moments ago, today, shepherds in the field, you may not have known it, today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the Lord. A baby was born, but not any ordinary baby. A baby has been born who is different than the, the ones maybe you've been blessed with. There's a baby that's been born in Bethlehem today, and he is a Savior. Your Savior, the Savior, the Messiah, the Promised One, the Lord, God himself. Like the words the angel used were intentional to highlight a very important truth. Who is Jesus? Suddenly a great company, the heavenly host, appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Like the angel's message to the shepherds was, was, yes, a birth announcement, but even more importantly, words and insights for you and me to answer life's two most difficult questions, the important questions, the needed answers to the, the biggest questions in life. Who is Jesus? And what does Jesus do? Why does he matter for you and for me? What's the significance that he brings in celebrating his birth? Like, people don't stop and celebrate your birth worldwide, yearly, for 2,000 years. Just saying. Pastor Tim, as important as your 50th birthday was, only two people and your wife went along with you on the trip. You're not that big a deal. But this birth is, because it answers those two questions. And that's what the angel said. It's all that they said, that the song was glory to God in the highest. You know what the word glory means? Like when someone receives glory and honor, it's something that they're worthy of because of their achievements. Praise, honor, glory. When we say yours be the glory forever and ever, amen, we're, we're praying that, that God himself receives glory for his achievements. So Charles Wesley took that song and that one phrase of all those angels and wrote an entire song to help answer those two questions. Who is Jesus and what does Jesus do so that you and I might know the answer to why is he worthy of glory? What are those achievements? And that's why I would pitch to you that the one song on the angels playlist leads to this. And what I want you to find in this song. Well, I want you to add it to your playlist this year. Maybe take a step and listen to it multiple times in the week ahead. The angel's playlist is simply this. It is good news for you. For all. Just like it was for the shepherds 2,000 years ago. Because it answers the question, who is Jesus? And we all need to remember that and listen to that. 
And what does Jesus do? And you need to remember that, and I need to remember that, and so does everyone. So let's look at the song and see the good news, the answers to those questions of why the angels sang glory to God in the highest on that first Christmas, and why we will one day join angels in singing it and saying it around the throne of heaven. Let's go to verse 1. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all you nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Like the words at the end and the words at the beginning sandwich for me what is the most important part of verse 1 that I think the angels want you and I to hark and listen to. That's what the word hark literally means, listen. So Charles Wesley, who wrote 6,000 plus songs, wanted you and I to remember right there in the middle. Why hark and listen to what the angels sang? Why is it possible to be joyful, to join the triumph, to proclaim this? Why would one do that? Because of who Jesus is and what Jesus does. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. In order for something to be reconciled, it first has to be broken. And almost always reconciliation involves relationships. Like a broken relationship needs reconciliation. And Charles Wesley knew that. The angels knew that. Like days like that when the angels were singing in the heavens filled with joy and excitement were not the only times that they were used and sent to the scene. And sometimes when they were sent to the scene, it was anything but, but joyful, but it was all broken. Like, you know, the first time we see the angels appear on the pages of Scripture? It's in Genesis chapter 3 when God sent them to, to guard the garden so that the, the ones walking out of it with their heads bowed down in shame could never re-enter God's presence. Like the angels knew the brokenness that sin brought. The angels were oftentimes messengers of God sent to God's people to call them out on the carpet for their brokenness. Repent, turn, woe. But that's not the message the angels sang that night. Peace on earth. A savior has been born. Like the brokenness of Adam and Eve and the sin that all of us inherit from them, the brokenness that you have that causes you to rebel against God, shake your fist at God, at times make yourself God in your world, disobey God, the the brokenness of your life and relationship with God alone can be reconciled through Jesus. Because of who he is. God. Like Jesus was no ordinary baby. Jesus is the king. The ruler of the universe. Pastor Bill last week talked about his incarnation. The beautiful little baby that, that he was. But, but remember who he is. That's monumental. That makes him different than any other baby who has ever been born And what Jesus does is reconciles you with God. He needed to be God because God alone could be perfect, born into this world without sin and live a perfect life that was demanded by God. He needed to be perfect, but as God, he also needed to pay the price that you and I couldn't pay and endure literally what Isaiah talked about before. Your sins have caused God to turn his face from you is exactly what God the Father did to his son on Good Friday when He forsook him. Jesus had to be forsaken. He had to be born. He had to live a perfect life. And he had to breathe his last breath so that you and I might be reconciled with God, that sinners could have their sins taken away, their guilt removed, their shame removed, and spend eternity in the presence of God. See, the angels, when Adam and Eve sinned, blocked off access to God in the garden but they knew Jesus' birth was all about 
restoring our relationship so that we would have access to the throne of God for eternity. And so the angels sang, glory. <laughs> glory because of that achievement that they knew would happen. Which is why that flows nicely into verse 2. Verse 2 gets more into the who Jesus is as opposed to what does Jesus do. Christ my highest heaven adore. It's why the angels were singing, Christ the everlasting Lord, late in time behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the God had see, hail the incarnate deity, pleased as man with man to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Now I left you space in your notes or you can circle this because uh, the words are in there as well. But Charles Wesley wanted to make sure you understood the 200 proof doctrines and truths about who Jesus is. Like the Bible is filled with them, the passages reinforce them, but they are so vital and important, they are game changing. C.S. Lewis wrote it this way in one of his books. He said, Jesus has made lots of claims about who he is. And so he's either Lord, as he says, He's a lunatic who's out of his mind, or he's a bald-faced liar. Jesus made claim after claim after claim about his lordship, but one of the things the angels made sure of, one of the things God the Father made sure of at different times during his life, one of the things that the Old Testament and New Testament allow us to do, what the angels were doing that night, singing, a Savior has been come, glory to God in the highest, this wasn't the shepherds making this up. This wasn't Jesus making the claim. It was God himself sending his messengers to make sure they would know who Jesus is. Everlasting Lord. He was there at the beginning and will be there at the end. He is a part of the Godhead, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is the incarnate God himself. He's Emmanuel. Like Charles Wesley knew the vital importance for our faith rested in the fact of who Jesus is, not just any other baby, not just a great teacher, not just someone who pulled off a few great amazing miracles by chance. No, he is God. God from beginning to end of time, God. And you and I need God. Like without Jesus, we have no hope. Like, you can get a lot of great gifts at Christmas. But they're not going to last all that long. The list might be filled with amazing things. But next year, the list will be filled by more amazing things. But if Jesus isn't a part of your Christmas celebration, if you don't listen to these words, hold on to these words, understand the life-changing news, the good news that this is, you're missing out on what can make Christmas great. Who is Jesus? He's the Lord of heaven and earth. He's your God. He's my God. He's your Savior. He is my Savior. He's the only way we can have access to eternity. Which is why verse 3 is perhaps my favorite verse of the whole song. Like, and sometimes when you sing a, a familiar Christmas song, you know verse 1, and you had to memorize it as a kid, and, and maybe you dabbled in verse 2, but you get to verse 3, and you, you start to do the watermelon, watermelon. You sing with your lips as a kid in the program, but you didn't really know the words because you didn't memorize it. Like, don't overlook the last verse. It's why I wanted you to hear from beginning to end, this song is so chock full of great, good news. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Hail, praise the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. We would do well to, to hark what the herald angels sing. To listen to those words. Like just look at all the things about what Jesus does that you find in verse 3. Like Jesus brings peace. Jesus is the son of righteousness. He makes us right with God. He takes away our, our sin and our guilt and God sees us as holy and pure. He brings light and life. He shows the way to heaven. He makes the path possible. 
He's given you new life because he rose to life, risen with healing in his wings. He's able to heal you spiritually, to, to heal your soul from all of its sins. Mild he lays his glory by. He set aside the glory of heaven. He was born so that you and I might enjoy glory one day. Born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth. Born to give them second birth. Just look at those last three verses. Do you understand how important it is here to hear those three verses? To listen to those truths about what make Christmas monumental. Why it's about more than what we're going to celebrate on the 24th. Because there will come a day when either you or someone you love faces death. And those days are not Christmas Day celebration joys. Like, and when you face death, you need to remember what Jesus came to do for you. He came to live so that he could die, so that you and I would never die. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Like, if you ever sit in here and in the front row of a funeral service of a loved one of yours. I pray that you are comforted in the truth that the one who came, came so that the person you love, that you know, while they, their life here on earth ended, they did not die. They only crossed over from life to life. And that is not possible without Jesus Christ. He was born so that you would never die. He died so that you would live forever. He died so that one day you would rise victorious and have a glorious body like his. The angels sang glory to God in the highest because they knew it meant for you and for me a glorious eternity with God, which is only possible because of God. Hark, Charles Wesley wrote, listen, to what the angels sing, what the angels' message was. It is good news because the one born, this Christmas celebration is all about who Jesus is, God himself in human flesh to reconcile you with God, to make a way for you to be with God. So sing glory to the newborn king. And Charles Wesley, when he wrote this song, must have dug into the other scripture passages about Jesus and who he is because the angels didn't go into the great deal of death, but the song does. And maybe one of the verses that he remembered was this about Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Who is Jesus? He is God himself. Hark, listen up this Christmas season. Listen to the words of the angels, the good news, to celebrate who he is, God. And listen, like John says, so that you can celebrate what he does. To all who received him, those who believed in him, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born out of natural descent, nor of a human decision or a husband's will, born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Listen, hark what the angel said and sang. Who is Jesus? He is God. What does Jesus do? He's made you his child. Celebrate that this Christmas. In addition to all the other good things. Because as you celebrate the good news, the angels playlist, you'll be reminded but an amazing person named Jesus who is your Savior and my Savior. Not every Christmas song from beginning to end is, is good. But this song, having it on your play, playlist, remind you each and every day of the good news that Jesus Christ, your Savior and my Savior, has reconciled you with your heavenly Father, so you can spend eternity there. We do well over the days ahead to, to hark, to listen.
in the midst of all the distractions and all the noise of even good things, the angels say, celebrate the good news and sing glory to the newborn king. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and your promises. Like in a season when there are so many good things to celebrate, let us remember to add to the top of the list the good news. May the angels' song, the words and message they proclaimed, be a call for us to action, to listen. Lord, give us courage and strength to to pause in this season to do just that. To maybe read through Luke chapter 2 each and every day to listen to who you are and what you do. Lord, take it. Give us the opportunities to listen and add to our playlist a new song that's so chock full of truths, that can bless our lives, that can remind us of what you came to do and all that it means for us, eternity with you. Lord, we pray that you continue to bless our Christmas season in the days and weeks ahead.